when yellow fever decimated Philadelphia in the 1790s, it struck a city bursting at the seams and wrestling with the vision laid out by William Penn a century before. Philadelphia had experienced a remarkable period of urban growth. There's nothing here when William Penn arrives in the 1680s, and by the time of the American Revolution, it's the center. It's the center of the new world. Philadelphians are fond of quoting uh, a letter that William Penn wrote to a friend when he talks about laying out Philadelphia as a green country town. And there's an interesting contradiction here. There was no green country town in Philadelphia. There was very little grassy space. There were no parks. There were no central areas. You'd have to go out of the city to find those amenities. The realities of economics and capitalism left Penn's grid plan in tatters, bustling, dense, concentrated along the river's edge. The city never obeyed the plan of the proprietor. But you can also see how small Philadelphia is. You can see the huge green fields around it, the vast rivers that surround it. By the 1790s, Philadelphia really doesn't extend much west of about 8th Street. The economic action is by the river, and people want to be as close to that action as they can get to. Those alleyways, which we all find very charming nowadays, were where Philadelphia's working people got stuffed in increasingly dense, smelly, dirty quarters. The busy town of commerce and trade found little use for parkland. Any open space was fair game. Places that are trading ports, they don't need parks. For pity's sake, people have work to do. Who's hanging around parks? There was only really one park in Philadelphia at this time, and that was the State House Garden at Fifth and Walnut Street. The five squares, public green parks, that William Penn had intended to be bastions of health and recreation for his settlers, had since become lumberyards, graveyards, and put to every purpose but providing fresh air. Washington Square was a burial ground. It was where Revolutionary War soldiers had been buried. Slaves used to gather there and talk to their fellow countrymen and their native tongues. In 1792, a number of the city's prominent citizens sent a petition to city and state government calling for these green squares to be restored. Those petitions largely fell upon deaf ears. By 1800, over 70,000 people lived in Philadelphia County, making it the largest urban center in the United States. But plagues of yellow fever struck nearly every year and sent Philadelphians searching for solutions to a disease that seemed to breed in the congestion of the city itself. By the 1820s, the city starts improving the eastern squares, Franklin and Washington Square. One of the important things that happens in 1825 is that they give names to all five squares. And after that time, the city begins to devote money to actually landscaping these spaces as public squares. The recovery of the parks as a matter of policy was a response of fear, a response of prestige, of class, of race, of a sense that we could control our city as we move from being just a place to being a city that expresses our ambitions. We need to control people who don't figure in those ambitions. And so we need to police our open spaces so that they don't become sewers for the people we don't want to pay attention to. As Philadelphia moved westward, parks would play a central role. Soon after the restoration of the five original squares, the city set aside miles of forests and meadows on the Schuylkill River as the largest landscaped park 
in the nation. Yellow Fever presents an enormous challenge to the city, but out of that challenge is a set of opportunities, a set of problems to be dealt with, and we'll make it a better place once we get this under control. The notion of parks more broadly, I think, is, is what comes out of that. It's not, I think, coincidental that the great movement, not just in Philadelphia, but nationally, for municipal parks begins shortly after. Cities all over the place adopt this view that in order to be healthy, we need these open park spaces.